Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag for 2020. I have done this tag before. I know probably 2019, maybe 2018. Not really sure. I can't remember how many times I've done this, but it's definitely something I try to do every year. It is pretty much a book tag created by two creators, I think, and I'll link them down below because I don't remember. <laughs> but this tag is meant to be like obviously a mid-year check-in. So around June, you talk about like how your reading year has been going so far and, you know, disappointing reads, books you've loved, books you want to read for the second half of the year, things like that. So it's probably going to be a longer video and my camera's going to die. So <laughs> I need to go ahead and get into this, but I did see that I was tagged by Haley from, I believe her channel name is Hayden Books, and I haven't watched the video yet, but I am going to later, so I'm going to put the card for that since she tagged me. Thank you for that because it was perfect timing since I was about to go freaking film this today. But there's 13 questions, so I just definitely need to go ahead and get into the video before my camera freaking dies. <laughs> so question number one is best Oh my gosh, shut up phone. Question number one is best book you've read so far in 2020? Macy, shut up. For this, I kind of had to go with The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I've loved a lot of books so far this year and I've also disliked some books as well. And this one, I was just so hyped for this book. If you couldn't tell in May, I filmed like Hunger Games videos all the way. It was every single freaking video I did in May, pretty much. I ended up being one of those people that absolutely loved it. I gave it a five out of five stars. And while there is other books that I love this year, like there's nothing else that compares to the excitement and the adrenaline rush I had for this book. So I definitely think I have to say it's one of my favorites at least of the year but definitely probably my favorite just because my Hunger Games heart really thrived and I know there's people that really hate this book and I totally understand why but let me love it <laughs> and I definitely need to film my full length review for it. I did do a reading vlog for it. If you want to watch that, I'll put a card for that. But I want to do a sit down video where I really collect my thoughts about this book because yes, there's things I loved and then there is some things that weren't my favorite thing ever. But overall, my reading experience with this is just unmatched. I was so enthralled by this book, so into it, and I read it so quickly as well because I was just that obsessed with learning more and more about what was going on in this book because it is set 64 years before the original Hunger Games trilogy and obviously if you've ever been on my channel I'm obsessed with the Hunger Games anything Hunger Games was really gonna make me thrive so just hands down nothing <laughs> goes past the enjoyment I had for this so far this year because it was crazy. Question two is best sequel you've read so far in 2020. So for me, this was kind of hard because I, I never know. <laughs> like I have a lot of series that I like and everything, but something that really stuck out to me is Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman. This is a part of a graphic novel series. It actually is a web comic that continues to upload and you can read it for free online if you want but it's also something that's publishing physically as well and I just absolutely loved this. This was actually like a reread for me because I read it online first and then when it came out physically I was able to read the whole thing in my hands and I just love the romance. It's a gay romance between this boy named Nick and then another boy named Charlie and they're just so freaking cute. One is just gay and the other one is bisexual and he's kind of questioning himself and realizing that he might actually be bisexual and he never really found that from himself before and he's just exploring his sexuality with Charlie and ah oh, it's the cutest thing literally I recommend it so much if you just want something that is so sweet and adorable and it just will make you so happy and I just love the illustrations as well it's so cute let's find an example them texting each other it's just adorable and I highly recommend these Question number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. For me, I chose Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. This- <laughs> Macy, shut up. No. This is a book I just got for my birthday. I used a Orange Noble gift card to purchase this. I'm so excited about this book. What I really know about it is it is about a trans boy. He's black, queer, and transgender, and he's kind of trying to figure out his life from that. And also, I just want to point out how he has scars from obviously removing 
the breast. I feel like that's never freaking represented in book covers and I just think that is such a nice detail to add for the transgender community. And I've just been hearing so many amazing reviews of this book. Not only is the cover beautiful, but it seems like everyone is saying the story inside is so beautiful as well. And I, I can't wait to see how Felix navigates his freaking life. It seems like he's getting a bunch of hatred from people around him because of his transition and everything. And so definitely trigger warnings for that if that is too much for you to read. But in the end, I feel like it's gonna be a heartwarming self-discovery journey that hopefully will end happily. I can't wait to read this and I just feel like it's going to be absolutely amazing. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So for me, I am really looking forward to Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. This is supposed to come out, let me see, July 7th. So it's coming out pretty soon. So hopefully I'll get my hands on it as soon as it comes out. Obviously, from the start, this cover is gorgeous. I saw it a while ago, a few months ago, and was completely captured by this cover, but when you read the description, it hits you even more. I believe this is going to have a female-female romance in it. It's about 200 years after Cinderella found her prince, but the fairy tale is over. Teen girls are now required to appear at the annual ball where the men of the kingdom select wives based on a girl's display of finery. If a suitable match is not found, the girls not chosen are never heard from again. And it seems like the main character, Sophia, she would much rather marry her best friend from childhood, Erin, which I believe is a girl, which we, we love that. It's Pride Month. We love it even more this month, but awesome. And it seems like she tries to flee this whole event. Obviously, she doesn't want to be married off and everything like that sucks. And she meets Constance, who is a descendant of Cinderella and her stepsisters. And they find out there's a lot more to Cinderella's story than they ever knew. I think it's just a big spin on the classic fairy tale and after the time of Cinderella, after she's dead, and obviously something more is going on with this story. So I cannot wait to give this one a read. I feel like it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Question number five is the biggest disappointment that I have read so far this year. For me, unfortunately, it is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is the second book to Children of Blood and Bone, which is a YA fantasy that came out like almost two years ago. And I've read it twice, absolutely loved it, and so excited for this one. And for some reason, this book just did not hit the same. I don't really love the characters that much anymore. There was so much happening, but at the same time, it felt like nothing nothing was happening. Like, I just didn't care. I have a whole vlog of me reading it if you want to watch that and really get more into my feelings of it because it was just so freaking sad. Like, I was really hoping to love this one and it's going to be a trilogy so hopefully the third one wraps up in a way that like is great and fantastic and can prevail past this second book syndrome that this one hit because dang the first one was just so amazing and to read this one it was just such a letdown to be honest and I don't even feel like explaining the first book because I explain it constantly in my videos it's about this all black cast and there's three main characters pretty much magic has been taken away by the king and they're trying to get it back that's the main plot <laughs> and it's really good, but this one just didn't hit and it's so freaking sad. Question number six is biggest surprise so far of the year. For me, this was Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. I feel like it shouldn't have been that big a surprise for me because I have been a Sarah J Mass trash fan for since middle school and I love her books, but I kind of like forget how much I love them. She's just really good at making characters that I care about. And this one, oh my God, it was an adult fantasy, kind of like a murder mystery type of book where, dude, I really don't feel like explaining this. I have a whole reading vlog for this book. It's spoiler free if you want to see me read it and freak out over it because dude, this book hit me like emotional roller coaster. It was crazy and I was just so into the story and the characters. I, I would just had so much fun with this book and I just didn't really expect fully how much I was going to be into it and how much I loved the characters and everything. I think this is probably her best book maybe. I really love Kingdom of Ash and Queen of Shadows but this one was just 
really well done in my opinion. Obviously this book still has haters. There's always going to be people that don't like a book and then people that do like a book. It's a thing. It happens. It's normal. It's okay. But I personally love this book and I cannot wait for the future ones in the series. Question number seven is favorite new author, a debut author, or someone that's just new to me. For this, I chose You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I actually just read this. Like, it was one of the last books I've read. And I absolutely loved this book. So many tabs. Gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It's a female-female romance following a black lead. She is run in for prom queen so she can win a scholarship to her school that she's been dreaming about attending for years. And she kind of falls in love with the other prom competitor. And they're just adorable. I just love this so much and I definitely think everybody should give this a read because it was just so fabulous and it definitely should have been on the New York Times bestseller list just saying it freaking sold out on Amazon I'm pretty sure so why wasn't it on there don't know if you want a cute romance and just a powerful main character, she has anxiety but she's working through it and she's just trying to do what she has been dreaming about. She also has a brother who has like sickle cell. He's always sick and she's dealing with that. Her mother passed away a few years ago from the same thing and I just love this main character. Like, oh my god, she is just so cute. Like, Liz Lighty. I literally forgot her name. I promise I love her. I just can't remember characters' names. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Liz Lighty is a queen and that's why she's wearing a crown because she's a queen. Okay, read this book. Question number eight is new fictional crush. I had to think about this one for a second because I was like, who the frick am I gonna choose? Like, I did not remember. And then boom, I was struck with Matthew Fairchild from Chain of Gold. This is such a basic ass answer, but Matthew Fairchild... Matthew Fairchild stole my heart. This is the first book in the Last Hours trilogy. It is like a companion series to the Infernal Devices trilogy, which is a trilogy I have loved to death. I love that trilogy. The Shadowhunter Chronicles just have my heart. I'm such a basic bitch, but I don't care. Matthew Fairchild stole my heart. He's a bit of an alcoholic, but like he has problems and he's like a soft boy inside. And he's also bisexual, I believe. And we freaking love him. And if I had to choose another one, probably Anna Lightwood as well from this book. She's an icon. She's amazing. And also the love of my life. Both of them. And they're both friends. Like they're friends with each other too. And I just, I freaking love them. Okay. Matthew Fairchild, here's a drawing of him. And then Anna Lightwood, a drawing of her. We love them so much. Also Cordelia, just everybody in this book I have a crush on, amazing. Question number nine is a new favorite character. So not just a crush, a new favorite character. And I'd be lying to myself if I didn't say Sejanus Plinth from The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. He reminded me so much of soft boy Peter Malark and he made me happy. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but he was someone that President Snow knew. President Snow's a bitch. So President Snow played him so hard. But Sejanus Plint was the man, the boy. Why did he not narrate this book, by the way? It could have been <laughs> Sejanus or Lucy Gray. It could have been either one of them. And I appreciate the uh, villain origin story, but at the same time, what we could have had from Sanjana's Plint's point of view. I just loved him so much. He had heart and I just love me some boys with some heart, at least fictional boys, you know. You can't trust some men in our world half the time, just saying. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. For me, this had to be Dear Martin by Nick Stone. This one is such a powerful read. It's about a boy named Justice. He is someone with really great grades. He has a bright future and he's just awesome. Plain and simple, he's awesome. And one day he has an encounter with a police officer. The police officer completely judges him is racist and everything, just stereotypes him instantly and ends up like arresting him and taking him in. And after that experience, he was kind of changed forever when he realized that even him with like his top notch grades and just everything, like he viewed himself very highly. He was just like, whoa, like I didn't do anything. And it really hit him in the head being like, whoa, like I'm really getting judged just based on my skin color. And obviously that's heartbreaking and he goes on a journey with his friend, Manny. Manny is his only black friend. They're 
attending a school that is primarily white people and they're around kids who say some messed up shit, some racist shit. They're trying to figure out like what to do about this. Manny like brushes it off, he just lets it happen, but Justice is just starting to realize like no, this is not okay and I don't want to spoil anything so I'm not gonna go much more into it but this was just <laughs> really impactful. The last scene really got me into tears because it was just it it was an all around, it came together sort of moment. And I was like, whoa, this book did something. And it's so short, so I definitely recommend it. I did a reading vlog for this as well. So I'll link a card for that. It was just so good and it's so short. So I definitely think everybody should read it. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy. For this, I am choosing the selection series. This is the second book, The Elite <laughs> by Cure Cast because I'm trying to get my sister to read the first one. She still hasn't done it and it's in her room. And I don't feel like going to get it. But these were rereads for me. I did a whole rereading like series of vlogs if you want to watch those. I read these in middle school and rereading them now as a college student just being like, whoa, these were were so freaking entertaining and I was surprised by how much I still loved these books and the romance and the drama and the characters. It's pretty much The Bachelor with a prince and I love The Bachelor. So it did everything for me. The drama, the cute ass romance that I will forever stand behind and now there's gonna be a movie. Dead, deceased, oh my god. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Question number 12 is most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? So I'm gonna have to say A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. I am currently reading this book, that's why it's out of the jacket. And just look at this cover, it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't get over it, I bought it for myself. And honestly, I'm not really enjoying it that much. I am like 76 pages into it and it's a really short book. It's just like really boring it. We're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> I'll have a reading vlog soon talking about it but dang it's beautiful though i'm reading the book though and it's it's not living up to the cover not gonna lie but i hope it gets better <laughs> and the final question is question 13 what books do you need to read by the end of the year i didn't even answer this on my phone because i took notes for this i have so many things but i just recently bought some books so i don't know <laughs> oh my new releases Cassandra Clare's new book that comes out the second one in the like Magnus series that she has the eldest curses I'm excited for that and I'm excited for Cinderella is dead and I have like a whole list and I didn't prepare this part because I didn't feel like it I really want to read a song of wrath in ruin or is it Wraith? Not Wraths. <laughs> I'm stupid. By Roseanne A. Brown. This is a new fantasy that just came out and I couldn't tell you what's about now. But when I read the description, I was like, whoa, this is about to hit so hard in my fantasy vibes and everything. So I'm super excited to read this one. Booby, shut up. Sorry, I call my dog Booby because she's a boob. <laughs> Why am I struggling so hard? <laughs> So it looks like the main character, Malik, he is wanting to escape his war-stricken home and start a new life with his sisters, but then a spirit freaking abducts his younger sister, Nadia, as payment to enter this new city of Zaran that they're wanting to live in. Malik strikes a deal that if he kills Karina, the crown prince of Zaran, that he can have Nadia back. But Karina has deadly aspirations of her own. Her mother has recently been assassinated and Karina has decided she wants to resurrect her mother with ancient magic, requiring the beating heart of a king. And she knows just how to obtain one by offering her hand in marriage to the victor of this competition that is about to go down that Malik is gonna be in. So, oh shit, that sounds really freaking good. You see, I explained it. Good job, Peyton. I did it. I did it. So, I'm sweating. This is like a 30 minute long video. <laughs> Love that. I need to go. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like it, comment down below. Have a good day. Actually, I didn't tag anybody. I'm not gonna tag anybody. You know, if you wanna do the tag, do the tag. <laughs> like this video, comment down below. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Make sure to follow all my social medias, which are linked down below, and go click the bell button, which is right by the subscribe button, which you should have already clicked, and goodbye.